set off on a journey through the kingdom of Kars Modan, courageous adventurers, where breathtaking vistas and a sense of tranquility await you. As the lawmaster of this dwarven realm, I invite you to accompany me through the heart of Loch Modan. Wander the sloping landscapes where nature's embrace shields the hidden wonders of this ageless land waiting to be discovered. For centuries, this scenic area has been the home of the dwarves with Ironforge to the west as their capital. The land is rich in minerals and provides an ideal location for mining and smithing, activities that are central to dwarven culture. Known for their architectural talents, they constructed the Stone Wrought Dam, a marvel of engineering that transformed the landscape by creating the expansive lake that now shares the region's name. Following the events of the War of the Three Hammers, the dwarves of Loch Modan honored their fallen leaders by erecting two great statues. These imposing figures stood guard over the Southern Pass, now marked by the volcanic scars of Ragnaros, serving as a stern warning to any who might threaten the Dwarven realms. During the Second War, the Orcs of the Horde, intent on conquest and destruction, overran this peaceful land. The invasion brought with it chaos, turning the lush grasslands into a battlefield. Despite the overwhelming might of the Horde, the Dwarves of Ironforge stood firm. Their courage and determination were resolute as they defended their home against the invaders. In the end, the Dwarves' efforts bore fruit as they reclaimed their beloved homeland from the clutches of the Horde. The victory, however, came at a great cost. The region was left scarred by the ravages of war. Today, the remnants of this dark period still linger. Broken ballistae and catapults lie submerged in the depths of the lake and scattered across its islands. The dwarves, ever resilient, have since worked to heal the wounds of war, striving to restore the tranquility that once defined their domain. As guardians of this isolated region, they continue to watch over it, ensuring that the serenity of Loch Modan endures for future generations. So come. Explore the dwarven settlements, marvel at the majestic dam, and unravel the tales of this historic land together. The picturesque region of Loch Modan is cradled within the rugged embrace of the Karsmodan Mountains, a subcontinent notable for its majestic scenery and deep dwarven heritage. East of Dunmurrah, this expansive land is renowned for its temperate climate, creating an environment where pine and birch trees gently dot the hillsides. At the heart of Loch Modan lies its most prominent feature, a vast lake, the namesake of the area, its waters held back by a massive dam. Despite its natural beauty, Loch Modan is fraught with dangers, including hostile trogs, kobolds, and the formidable ogres of the Mogrosh stronghold. These threats are a constant challenge to the safety and stability of the region. The trogs, particularly, unearthed from their subterranean abodes due to dwarven excavations, have infested the mountainous terrain, establishing crude camps and inhabiting the many caves. Loch Modan's strategic importance cannot be overstated. Situated near Ironforge, it serves as both a buffer and a first line of defense against potential invasions from the east. The presence of the various defensive structures throughout the region underscores its significance in the broader geopolitical landscape. The area is well connected to neighboring zones, each with its own unique characteristics and challenges. To the west, it borders Dunmurrah, a snowy terrain accessible by foot through the North and South Gate Pass, or by flight path from the dwarven town of Thelsimar. The wetlands, with its challenging swamp-like topography, lies to the north, reachable through the Dun Algaz Pass. To the south, the harsh and unforgiving badlands present a stark contrast to Loch Modan's temperate environment, while the searing gorge to the southwest, accessible through the Valley of Kings, offers a glimpse into a land scorched by volcanic activity. In essence, Loch Modan is a portrayal of the dwarven spirit, resilient, enduring, and deeply connected to the earth. Its geography and mineral wealth are typical characteristics of environments that attract dwarves, with its elevated terrain rich in natural beauty and resources. The combination of its strategic location, abundant deposits, 
and challenging environment make Loch Madan a region of significant importance and interest within the greater landscape of Azeroth. A band of new dwarven adventurers set forth on a journey from the snow-clad peaks of Dunmurra. Their path leads them eastward through the Southgate Pass, a fortified passage that connects the high mountains of their dwarven homeland with the lower elevations of Loch Madan. This well-trodden path, often frequented by those venturing to or from the dwarven town of Thelsamar, is marked by the vigilant presence of the Southgate outpost. As the explorers traverse the Southgate Pass, they find themselves entering the lush, verdant expanse of a very different dwarven realm. Tucked away in the southwestern corner of Loch Modan, the Valley of Kings is a sight to behold. Its green meadows and ancient towering statues stand as silent guardians of dwarven heritage and valor, built by the Wildhammer and Bronzebeard clans to honor their leaders. While the path through the valley also leads to the perilous region of the Searing Gorge, the gate to this volcanic wasteland remains securely locked, guarded by mountaineer Pebble Bitty, a staunch defender who requires proof of might and metal from any who seek passage. Our heroes, young and eager though they are, must heed the wisdom of experience and bide their time. The journey to the Searing Gorge is a tale for another day, a future adventure that awaits when they have honed their skills and gathered their strength. Leaving the solemn beauty of the Valley of Kings behind, our group of dwarven adventurers continues their journey through the breathtaking landscapes of Loch Modan. Their path, a winding trail marked by the footprints of countless travelers before them, leads them ever eastward toward the beating heart of the region and its primary settlement, Thelsamar. Located on the western banks of the expansive lake, the town is a welcoming sight for the young travelers, and Thelsamar does not fail to greet them with the warm bustle of dwarven life. As the fellowship enters the town, the first thing that catches their eye is the griffin roost, where the majestic griffins perch, ready to carry riders across the vast stretches of Azeroth. The village, vibrant with artisans, traders and explorers, is a lively tableau of their rich culture. The warm glow of the inn welcomes them, offering a respite filled with the hearty aromas of roasting meat and the robust laughter echoing over mugs of frothy lager. It is a place that feels like home, a place where tales are shared and friendships forged. Amidst the comfort and camaraderie, the adventurers find themselves wishing to linger, to savour the joys of Thelsamar's hospitality. The inn's halls, resonating with songs and stories, invite them to stay, to bask in the simple pleasures of good food and good company. Yet, even as they relish these moments, the allure of unexplored paths tugs at their hearts. Nature's call, ever persistent, whispers of mysteries beyond Thelsamar's borders, of lands untouched and horizons unclaimed. With a mix of reluctance and anticipation, the group knows that they must soon leave the warmth of this dwarven settlement behind. The road awaits, and with it, the promise of new adventures and discoveries. Our band of adventurers strides eastward along the shores of the loch. Not before long, they encounter Miran and Huldar, two dwarves burdened with barrels of blast powder and a broken wagon. The dwarves explain how their shipment for the Iron Band's excavation site was attacked by Dark Iron ambushers. Sensing their struggle and aware of the dangers that lurk within these lands, the group offers their aid in escorting the explosive goods to the archaeological location. Prospector Iron Band, overseeing the site, expresses his gratitude for the safe arrival of the shipment. The blast powder, critical for their excavation efforts, also serves as a defense against the recently excavated trogs. In the shadowed crevices of this impressive dig site, whispers of a formidable presence have started to circulate among the dwarven archaeologists. The rumors speak of a mighty trog chieftain who roams the area, the leader of the Stone Splinter tribe. A realization dawns on the explorers. Beneath their feet lies more than just artifacts. There lurks a hidden world, teeming with threats unknown and terrors untold. In their fervor to dig up the mysteries of the deep, 
the dwarves have disturbed a force of the time of the Titan, awakening age-old guardians of the Earth and entities whose slumber was meant to be eternal. The group departs, leaving Ironband to his ambitions, his focus unbroken, as he mumbles to himself, seemingly indifferent to the potential consequences of his tireless diggings. As the adventurers traverse the landscape, they find themselves drawn towards the Far Strider Lodge, a cottage of night-elven design tucked away in the region's southeastern woods. The lodge, renowned as a sanctuary for hunters, emerges as a welcoming sight amidst their arduous journey. With its rustic charm and the promise of a brief respite, it beckons them to pause and replenish their spirits. Marek Ironheart, a seasoned hunter known to all at the lodge, greets them with a friendly smile and tales of the wild. He presents the hunters among them with a challenge that sparks their excitement, a timed hunt for the local boars and buzzards, both favourites among the accommodation's regulars. The group decides to partake in these quests, venturing into the surrounding forests. The brief interlude at Fast Rider, filled with the camaraderie of fellow hunters and the satisfaction of a successful hunt, provides the explorers with a much-needed rest. The lodge remains a warm memory on their journey, a reminder of the simple joys of adventure and the bond between those who brave the wilds. As they prepare to leave, rejuvenated and ready for the road ahead, they carry with them not just the spoils of their quest, but also the memories of a shared experience in the heart of Loch Modan's wilderness. The group of dwarven adventurers, fresh from the challenges and learnings at the Fast Rider Lodge, make their way towards the heart of the region. The loch, with its shimmering surface reflecting the sky above, is surrounded by lush greenery, and in the distance the islands of the lake come into view. The trogs claim the islands as their own, fiercely guarding their land against intruders. As they approach the loch, the group comes across a peculiar sight, Bingles, Blastenheimer and his crashed plane. The gnome is looking rather distressed, and his face, usually bright with the thrill of invention and discovery, now carries an unmistakable shade of worry. Bingles, known for his remarkable contraptions and adventurous spirit, recounts a tale of misfortune to the party. He explains how, upon crashing into the shores of the loch, he was attacked by trogs from a nearby island. These brutish creatures, lacking any respect for the finer points of gnomish engineering, made off with his tools and special explosives. These items are crucial for his work, and without them, he laments, his efforts stand little chance of success. Moved by the gnome's troubles, the group decides to help. They agree to retrieve Bingles' stolen supplies, his wrench, screwdriver, hammer, and the blast and capper explosives. The locations, scattered around the nearby islands, promise a challenge, but the explorers are undeterred. After scouring the islands and bravely fighting off the thieves to recover all the stolen items, the group, with everything securely in their possession, returns to the gnome. His eyes light up with joy and relief as he sees his beloved equipment. Bingles is more than grateful. He's inspired by the party's selflessness and bravery. For Gnome Regan, he exclaims, his usual enthusiastic self once more. The group, more than happy to have lent their aid, continues their journey through Loch Modan. With the satisfaction of a good deed done, they remain keenly aware that there is still much to explore and discover in this land of hidden adventures. Our travellers set their sights northward, towards the Mogrosh stronghold. The journey leads them through untamed landscapes, brimming with the beauty of Azeroth's wilderness. As the adventurers approach the encampment, the environment transforms into a bleak image of desolation. Dead trees, their branches twisted and bare, stand as witnesses to the clan's devastating presence. Scattered around the stronghold are numerous caves, teeming with Mogrosh ogres, brutes and enforcers, and the air becomes heavy with a foreboding aura. The ogres, under the command of their leader, Choksul, have been coordinating attacks against Thelsamar, the stone-wrought dam, and various dwarven excavation sites. This reign of terror has left the townsfolk and local authorities in dire need of brave individuals capable of facing this threat. 
the party recalls the urgent mandate from Magistrate Bluntnose, Thelsamar's leader, who declared with resolve, Choksul must be stopped, and his head presented as undeniable proof of the ogre's defeat. Venturing deeper into the ogre encampment, the explorers find themselves drawn to one cave in particular, larger and more sinister than the rest. This cave, they sense, is the lair of Chok Sul, the clan leader. As they enter, a chilling sight greets them. The ceiling is adorned with a macabre display of bones and carcasses, remnants of past conquests and meals hanging like grotesque decorations. This grim spectacle underscores the savagery of these brutes and the fate of those who previously dared to challenge them. In this heart of darkness, the members of the group steel themselves for the confrontation with the Ogre Chieftain, the source of so much turmoil and fear in Loch Modan. The defeat of their leader marks a significant turning point in their journey. With the Ogre threat diminished, the group sets their sights on a new destination, the Stone Wrought Dam. The path ahead is clear, and they march onward, determined to face whatever challenges await them in the next chapter of their adventure. Leaving the remnants of the ogre encampment behind, the Fellowship of Dwarves journeys towards the colossal dam. As the towering structure comes into view, they are struck by a sense of awe. The sheer scale and engineering prowess embodied in the dam's massive walls leave them marvelling at the ingenuity of their ancestors. It was here, long before the Dwarves of Ironforge settled in this region, that a grand spectacle of nature unfolded. An enormous waterfall, fed by the waters of a steady underground source, cascaded with grace into the sprawling bays of what is now known as the Wetlands. At the very edge of this body of water, the Dwarves, masters of architecture and engineering, set off on an endeavour that would change the surrounding landscapes forever. With their renowned skill, they began constructing what would become one of Azeroth's greatest marvels, the Stone Wrought Dam. The creation of the dam was a feat of extraordinary effort and vision. As the dwarves toiled, the flow of water was artfully slowed, causing the lock to expand. The completion of the dam dramatically altered the environment of the wetlands, transforming what was once a submerged expanse into a sprawling marshland. Amidst this backdrop of engineering triumph, a call for aid echoes. Chief Engineer Hindavir, a dwarven figure of authority and wisdom who is stationed on the dam, seeks the assistance of brave souls. Our group of adventurers, drawn by the allure of the massive structure, find themselves heeding this call. The chief, suspecting something is afoot, sends the explorers to investigate the eastern ramp of the dam. On arrival, they are met with an alarming sight. Dark iron sappers, known for their treachery, guarding a suspicious barrel. As it turns out, the barrel contains a highly explosive powder and is a clear threat to the dam's integrity. Realizing the gravity of their discovery, the party confronts the dark iron culprits, dealing with the threat they pose. Acting swiftly, they skillfully diffuse the explosives, neutralizing the immediate danger. Upon the successful completion of their mission, the adventurers receive heartfelt gratitude from Chief Hindavir. His voice resonates throughout the area. The stone-wrought dam has been saved. Three cheers for our brave heroes. Their efforts have not only preserved a vital landmark, but also earned them the admiration of the dwarves of Loch Madan. As our adventure is coming to a close, there remain yet a few places to explore in this land of legend. The Fellowship of Dwarves presses on, leaving the dam behind as they journey toward the Algaz station. This sturdy outpost, perched on the cusp of the mountainous terrain, serves as a gateway to the uncharted swamps of the wetlands that lie beyond. Here, they encounter mountaineer Gringer Stormpike, a figure as rugged as the landscape itself, with a weathered face and eyes that had seen many a winter. His request was straightforward, yet laden with importance. I need a group of stout-hearted folk to venture into the nearby mine and retrieve what's ours. We can't afford to lose them to these invaders. Not far from the outpost lies the Silver Stream Mine, once an abundant source of silver for the Dwarven Kingdom. Its veins, rich in these precious ores, sustained the Dwarven craftsmanship of mining for generations. Yet, as with all things, 
the mine's bountiful days slowly ebbed away, leaving behind hollowed caverns and memories etched in stone. In the wake of the tunnel's decline, the dwarves of the Miners' League, unwilling to abandon such a significant site, transformed it into a storage depot. Crates filled with miners' gear, tools of trade, and perhaps a few forgotten relics of the past lay neatly stacked within the cavernous depths of the mine. But peace was not to last in the storied chambers of Silverstream. The undergrounds fell prey to the tunnel rat kobolds. These aggressive creatures, with their own greed for the mine's resources, scurried through the tunnels, laying their filthy paws on everything they could. The brave dwarves, accepting Stormpike's mission, venture into the depths of the mine. With determination and teamwork, they recover the stolen items, overcoming the kobold's resistance and ensuring that every piece of gear is accounted for. Upon completing their task, the adventurers make their way back to the station where the mountaineer awaits their return. With pride and satisfaction, they present the reclaimed items to him, fulfilling their promise to restore what had been unjustly taken. Stormpike greets them with a nod of approval, acknowledging their success in safeguarding a vital part of the Dwarven legacy. Recognizing their potential for greater challenges, he turned to them with a gleam of respect in his eyes. Beyond the Algaz Pass lies the wetlands, a marsh teeming with untold dangers and new opportunities. If any group can brave its wilds and uncover its secrets, it's you. His words opened the door to a new chapter of their journey, beckoning them towards the unexplored frontiers that lay just beyond the mountain pass. As the sun sets over the rolling hills of Loch Modan, our band of adventurers prepares to depart from this land of lakes and mountains. Their journey has taken them from the bustling life of Thelsamar to the formidable stone-wrought dam, leaving them with a profound sense of accomplishment and awe at the marvels of their homeland. Now, as they stand at the brink of new horizons, the call of adventure beckons them onward. The wetlands await, a land of mysteries and trials, promising new chapters in their ever-unfolding adventure. As your lawmaster, it has been my honor to accompany you through the highs and lows of Loch Modan to witness the courage and camaraderie that define these stout-hearted dwarves. Here we part ways, and I leave you with the enduring spirit of this region's inhabitants, a reminder of the strength and resilience that lie within us all. Fare thee well on your journeys, dear adventurers. May your paths be ever true and your hearts ever brave.